Hello and welcome to, to The Village Young. I'm your host, Coach Tina Lane, and it's a pleasure to have in the studio today our guest, Dr. Rebecca Simmons. This is March and we celebrate Women History Month. And what better to have a woman come in who is destined for greatness, destined and for everything that she does, destined for the group that she has established. I want to welcome Dr. Rebecca Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. It's just a real honor to be here, especially for Women's Month, because women have been so disempowered and it's time for us to take back our power. Thank you for having me today. It is my pleasure. So I'm going to give you a little bit, uh, audience, a little bit about her background. Dr. Rebecca Simmons, what can I say about her? She is a woman of God. She is a pastor. She is an author of how many books? 13. 13 books. How many women organizations do you have? Two. Two. And can you give us the name of them? Well, basically there's one women's organization and a women's group. So Women's Women Empowerment Group is a group of 4,000 plus women that I host on Facebook. And then we have Women Destined for Victory, which is a group that is new, newly formed okay. where I empower women to move past anything that hinders them, to tap into their purpose, as they begin to successfully walk out that purpose. Wow, and that's what we're gonna talk about later because our topic is women and living your purpose. Yes. But you also are a mother, you're a wife, so give us a little background, a grandmother. Wow, I am a wife <laughs> of 27 years, married to my wonderful <laughs> husband, Anthony Simmons, also known as Pastor Anthony Simmons. I am the mother of four wonderful children, two boys and two girls. And I want to say hello to my children, the grandmother of four okay, and the great grandmother of one the who just turned two. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> great grandmother. Awesome. That is great. So listen, uh, being a, you know, married for 27 years, um, and being a mother of four, you have a lot of wisdom, even with that as a woman and a lot of stuff that you share. And I know personally that you have shared, you have shared your background about marriage and motherhood, but you also incorporate that all into your purpose and knowing your identity of who you are. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to talk about as we celebrate Women History Month is a woman understanding her purpose. Is it something that is given to you by God? So we want to talk about that, like it's a God destined purpose that you have on this earth that you want to fulfill. And how do you define purpose? Yes, absolutely. I do believe that purpose is something given to us by God. You know, purpose, I'll just go ahead and define purpose, the reason for which something or someone was created. Good. So when we think about the reason for which someone or something was created, especially when we think about the someone, we have to go back to what? Our creator. Yes. So God created us with purpose in our DNA. So I tell everybody, you're not a wandering, wandering generality. You're here on purpose for a purpose. And your purpose is not just for you, but it's for me too, and everyone else that you come into contact with. So yes, purpose is definitely something that God gave us. Okay. He sent us here. I believe that we've been sent here yes. in the earth realm to fulfill a specific purpose. That was good. And I love the fact that you said, you know, we're here for purpose. Yes. And many times do we recognize how to fulfill that purpose? Do we understand what our purpose is? So that's going to lead me to one of my questions here because I know we can define what purpose is, but how do we recognize what it is? How do we go after it? So um, give me a question. Hmm. My question is how that was going to be the question. How do you find out what your purpose is? That's a great question. You know, that's a great question. And when you think about purpose and why am I here, a lot of the time women, especially we as women, mm -hmm. because we go through so much in life, yes. we get lost, you know, we get lost in just really navigating through the challenges that we have in life. Right. And we sometimes forget or even neglect to 
identify that we even have a purpose. We think our purpose is to be a mother, to be a wife. So many women just want to grow up and be a wife, get married, have children. Right. Maybe go after a certain career or get a job, but not really connecting, getting a career and having a job with your purpose. A lot of the time we grow up and go to college and then we go to work in the field that we went to college for. That is so, true. so defining your purpose, your real purpose is really about tapping in. Now going inside, like what is that thing that I really love to do? Yes. You know, what is the thing that you're passionate about? Right. What would you do if right. you didn't get paid for it? Right. What do, what comes easily to you? Like writing books for me. It's something I could do. I could sit down and write a book in a week. Yes. It comes easy where it would take a, some people maybe 10 years to write a book. So what is that thing that comes easily to you? And then the final thing, what breaks your heart? What is that thing that you would change in society if you could? Wow. What what is that yes. thing that you you're thinking about? Wow, if I could really make an impact in my lifetime, this is what I would do. I would say that's a clue and those are keys to finding your purpose. One of the things that you stated was what basically are you passionate about? What would you do if money wasn't involved in it? So I had to think about for myself, I'm passionate about helping people I love speaking, motivational speaking, um, engaging with people. I love being, you know, doing different workshops. That's my passion. Now, of course, I have an occupation, but my passion, I, I connected to my purpose. So is your passion and your purpose always connected? Your passion and your purpose are, I would say, 98 point five percent of the time <laughs> i can't say a hundred percent of the time because that's something that you would have to right. internally go in and 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 begin to examine right. what's inside of you but most of the time yes it is connected and i love what you said you have an occupation and then you have a passion yes and if you think about your occupation and your passion they probably don't right 100 percent line up Right. They don't sometimes. Does right. it? Like I have a passion for my job, but it's not the same passion right. I have for speaking right. and engaging in people. And you also talked about us understanding our identity. Yes. I remember, I'm just going to share this uh, quick testimony that when I was working uh, for another corporation and I stopped working for that corporation, I thought that was my purpose. I thought my occupation was my purpose, my purpose in life. So when I didn't have that anymore, I lost my identity and I didn't understand the purpose. So many times we connect our identity to what we do or whatever our title is, whether you're a mother, your wife, uh, your job. So when something changes, though dynamics changes, what happens then? So I had to learn and had to strip the way that had to strip that away that my purpose is not connected to what I do. Like far as my job, my purpose, what God has given me and he placed me on this earth to do. And whatever that is, it doesn't have to be my nine to five. So when I lost, when I lost my identity, well, I felt as though I lost my identity because I wasn't doing the daily routine. I didn't have the same responsibility. And people often identify my purpose to my career. So I wasn't right. just Tina Lane. I was Tina the banker, yes. Tina the banker center manager. Yes. And then when people used to ask me, tell me about yourself, instead of me telling them about who I was, I would start off by saying, well, I work for a bank. I'm a banker center manager, so I had this shift. Who is Tina? Yes. Tina has a purpose and a passion. Tina loves the Lord. Tina loves to do this. Her passion's about that. Then now later I may bring in my career, but that's not at the for, uh, forefront of how I identify myself. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that my identity is not connected to just what I do. My identity is connected to what God has put me on this place to perform. And that's part of my purpose and my passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a great point because your identity is your who yeah. and your purpose is your what. I like that. So, yes. so, yeah. so we have to understand that the who and the what, what they're two different things, yes. you know, but within the same, they could be put within the same capacity of the same one person. There's right. a who and there's a what. And then we know there's the when and the how and the where and all of that stuff. But when you think about the who am I, right? see who am I? And that's so important that in order for us to walk in our purpose with power, 
we have to know our identity. You know, as women, yes. especially, you're not just somebody's wife. You're not just somebody's mother. You're not just a banker. You're not just some employer or employee on a job, but you are somebody. Yes. You know, you are awesome. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. You are created to do great things. There's greatness on the inside of you, just kicking, kicking. Yeah. I always say there's greatness, just kicking, waiting to get out. You know, there's just so much. You are a one of a kind designer's original. There's yeah. nobody else on this whole earth that is just like you. So it's like when you begin to tap into the power of your identity, yeah. then you can walk in your purpose with authenticity, authenticity you know, right. so you could be authentic in your purpose when you know who you are and you know that nobody can beat you being you and nobody can do what you've been called to do like you can do what you've been called to do then you can walk with power saying I don't have to compete I don't have to be jealous I don't have to pull other people down I can actually lift up the people up because I know who I am and I love what you were saying like you you tapped in Yes. I know who Tina is. Yes. And that is just so powerful what you said about knowing your identity. Oh, yes, and knowing your identity, but everything that you just said as you were speaking, I was just thinking to myself, that's the reason why you have that uh, the group you have women destined for victory. Yes. Because we are destined for victory based on what we actually, um, you have said, what we have within us. You know, we yes. have to tap into that. So let's talk a little bit about now the struggles we have for the reason why we don't tap into how we are destined for victory or fulfilling that purpose. You must have been reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Because I was just going to say that what has happened to you and the struggles that you've had in life do not take away from your identity or the value of yeah. your identity. So you see, a lot of the times the struggles that we have make us feel less than. Yes. Make us feel disempowered, even if that's a word. Yeah, I like that word. I mean, I made it up. <laughs> okay. So make us feel like we're not worthy. Yes. I had some things happen to me. If I could just give a brief testimony about my own life. You know, I was, I was molested as a child, you know. Um, and to add insult to injury, my dad walked out when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad left the, left the home and he left me feeling abandoned and rejected. I know that wasn't his intention. Right. I know he had issues of his own, but that's how I felt. And as a result of me feeling that way, I went out there looking for love, looking for validation in all of the wrong places. And I always tell people I woke up looking into some horrible faces. Mm -hmm. uh, yikes, you know, like yikes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't yeah. sugarcoat my, my, yeah. my, 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 my journey. Yes. This is where I've been and this is where I've had the journey. And I thought that my identity was wrapped up in the molestation. I thought that my identity was wrapped up in daddy leaving. I thought that my identity was wrapped up in the fact that I ended up pregnant at 15, a mother at 16 on welfare and a high school dropout. I thought that was who I was, you know, uh -huh. so I had to find myself yes. like you with the banking. I had to get to the point where I found myself to say, look, girl, get a grip, you know, get a grip, go and find your power, go yes. out there. And it wasn't out there that I found my power, but it was in here. So what happens to you does not invalidate you. It does not take away from your value. It does not mean you're dirty, you're nasty. It doesn't yes. mean that you're not worthy. It just happened. You yes. were a victim. Yes. But do not allow victim to be your identity. Do not allow that to be your identity. You have to push out of that and say, uh -uh, I'm not a victim. I, it happened to me. I put the blame where it was. I release it by forgiving who did yes. it and I keep it moving. Keep it moving because there's there's greatness in you. We already talked about that. So, I, wow. I, you know me, I'm passionate about this. <laughs> no, and I, I'm, uh, all I had to say just now was wow because <laughs> when you said you are not a victim, yeah. that is key. You are not a victim yeah. and it's internally how you feel about yourself. Yes. No matter what the external circumstances were, yes, we know that you could have been a victim of this or that, but internally, how do you feel about yourself? And basically, don't self-sabotage yourself Come on. from success. Come